Welcome back, everybody. It is wine time. Well, unless you know everything about wine, odds are you get a little anxious when it comes to ordering vino in a restaurant. Well, fear no more. Our expert is here with help. Give it up for the wine diva, Leslie Miller, everybody. The mistress of Merlot, the chantreuse of Chardonnay. I the come up Wendy with, of wine. The Wendy of wine. I come up with a new one uh, every week for you. You so, do. I love this, and you know what I'm going to say, because I think one of the best things about you and these segments, because I used to be this person, I think people get embarrassed, they're intimidated, pick yes. your own word, when they go into a wine shop, they're at a restaurant and they don't know a lot about wine and they don't want to look dumb and right. therefore they don't ask questions. So we're going to help them in a yes. restaurant setting, right? No wine shaming here. No. No. Always ask questions. Yes. Nobody, I, but people do, That's they right. get intimidated because they think of fancy wine people and y'all right. are fancy, but I'm just saying, <laughs> yeah. All right. So, you know, there is that, that question that people have been asking me for years and years and it has come up so much lately. How do I pick wine on a restaurant list? Yes. There are so many misconceptions about what you're looking for on that list. And most people literally run their finger along the right column, which is the price point column, right? Yeah. They don't want to order the cheapest because then they might not look, they think, as good in front of a guest. A guest. And you don't want to go to the most expensive also because those price points can be very high. So generally people kind of hit in the middle, which is actually something that Jeff and I were just talking about yeah. off screen. So it literally is you, your eye goes to the middle. It's like, oh, I'm going to do not the $12, but I'm going to do right. the 14 because it sounds better. That's yeah. right. So number one, always ask for recommendations from your server, the person who's basically in front of you at the table. Um, and then also tell them what you're having for dinner, and that really helps. And then really big point, too, is to get three words under your belt that describes what you like about wine. And you... Oh, uh, three the, words. The Literally audience just and I like that. Three oh. words. And then you want to describe some flavors. Okay. So find your favorite wine, look it up online, and find just the very simple tasting notes behind that, that bottle. Whether it's strawberry, cherry, blackberry, you like pepper, you like smoke, all those things can really Smooth. help. Right. Yeah. Yes. So that really helps out a ton. Okay. Now, when you're looking at buying wine for a large group, because that's always the biggest question too, do I have eight people, 10 people at the table? The biggest like tip that I can give people is to find a medium bodied white or red. Now, light bodied in the white category would be Pinot Grigio, Chardonnay would be the biggest. What are the two grapes that people always order when they go out to dinner for a large group? Uh, Chardonnay. Chardonnay and Chardonnay. Cabernet. Ch Chardonnay. And they're the yeah, two yeah. hardest grapes to actually pair to with everything on the menu. Because don't y'all, I mean, Chardonnay is for white wine. I think it's the go to. I mean, kind you know, of, it's, yeah. I mean, when you're on the airplane, what's the baby bottle of booze? Chardonnay. Yeah, it's Chardonnay. I mean, yeah, it's, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Now, the hard part is yeah. when I say medium bodied, people are like looking at the screen right now going, well, what does that mean? Yeah. Literally, in the middle of sort of all the white grapes, there are two grapes Pinot Gris, which okay. is actually also Pinot Grigio, same plant. But when you take it to warmer regions, it becomes a little bit more round and kind of more um, peachy in okay. a way. And then also Viognier. These two white grapes will go with everything on the table from vegetarian to vegan to poultry to fish to really? pork. Yes. Those two right Those there. Those two grapes. Repeat the types again because I know people are going, oh, shoot, that's really good. What are the types again? So two grapes, Viognier, which is what's in your glass, and then also Pinot Gris. Now, the Viognier grape, literally, it, it's born in France, but you can find it all over the world. Oh. It's dry, kind of has a medium. When I say body, you know, we always relate it to skim milk, 2% or whole milk. Yeah. Right? And so it kind of has that 2% body to it. It's dry, delightful. And it's not overly sweet. Mm -mm. For a white, it's, it's, this is, and this, this is which one? So this is the Viognier from France. Okay. So it's dry, and it will, again, go with squash. Actually, these are your two grapes that you need for fall also. Got it. Because these go with kind of everything. Okay. Hold that thought right there, because we have a lot more, because I want to know about what, what happens when you get the bottle, who does the bottle, yes, what do you do yes. with it? Yes, Now what? Do you, what do you, do you do? share it with everybody? I don't know. We're going to share more tips with Leslie when we return. Back after this. Perfect.
morning, everybody. More with Leslie Miller. Today, today it is a wine class. I love it. We're getting Leslie for free, basically. Uh, it is a wine class on how to order wine in a restaurant. Now, we covered whites for you, and now we're moving into reds. That's right. So, um, one grape that really helps you out of every pairing situation is always Pinot Noir. I love that. A pairing situation. A pairing situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Now, I always call it your get out of jail free grape because Pinot Noir goes with everything. Again, vegan, vegetarian, pork, lean beef, the whole thing. Pinot but Noir. Okay. Pinot Noir. Now, another grape that you need to have in your life is Gamay. Gamay is actually from southern Burgundy. And if you want to get sort of nerdy by nature, yeah. you talk about Gamay. <laughs> Hey. Nerdy by nature. <laughs> I'll get nerdy uh, by yeah. nature. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Gamay is really great because, again, it's light bodied and it kind of goes with everything on the table. Now, this. That's what I'm getting ready to Yes, here. and okay. I love it because it it's displays lots of notes of juicy raspberry, strawberry, but it has a little bit of spice to it. So it kind of goes with a number of different foods. It does have a little spice. Yeah. And I enjoy. Oh, I in, so I like good. this one because I'm yeah. not again, audience. I, I'm a I'm slowly learning to like reds <laughs> throughout my relationship with Leslie, and I, I'm getting to that point. Yeah. Yeah. This is gamay. This gamay. Is, this is and gam so good. If you yeah. want to be yeah. sort of like, you know, crazy with your grapes, and you want to sound like you know what you're doing, gamay is a really good nerdy grape. Okay. Um, now, other grapes that kind of go with everything again on the table, always pick up a Cote de Rhone. A Cote de Rhone, which is Grenache and Syrah, goes with everything okay. again. You got to teach me how to say that first. So <laughs> Cote, uh, Cote de Rhone. Cote de Rhone. Oh, yes. okay. Let me practice. Okay, because I you, you say so. Uh, come up. Let's play server. And okay, so you're my server. Hi. What would you like to order tonight from the wine list? Well, I would like a Cote de Rhone. Woo! Did I get that. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, so Cote de Rhone, yeah. a little Grenache and Syrah, again, goes a long ways. And this actually will go into like a New York steak, um, into even like a prime rib goes really well with this. Mm. A couple of other grapes that I like here too, Barbera, which is from Italy, goes with everything. This one right here. Okay. Yes, and then Cabernet Franc, which is actually the father grape to Cabernet Sauvignon. <laughs> There, there's a fa there's there's lineage. <laughs> there's there's a father grape. This really is a wine class today. Jason. This is the daddy grape right here. This is the big daddy grape right there. What does that really mean? Oh wow, could they've yeah. written Franck any think, bigger on yes. that label? This Goodness such gravy. A cute, yeah. This is such a cute cute label. But you know these medium weighted grapes again go with everything on the table. Now the last question is, what are you supposed to do when the server brings the bottle to you? Okay, this is another I think intimidation moment for. people. People that don't often order a bottle of wine, what do you do? Okay, let's practice. Okay. Okay. Sure. Hi. Hi. Mr. Matheson, I brought you your Cote de Rhone this afternoon. That's what I ordered. That's it. That's <laughs> it. Now, when I when the server goes to pour this for you, really technically they're only supposed to pour an ounce. Now, what you're looking for, all you have to really do is put your nose inside of it, give it a nice swirl. Now, the the main smell that you're looking for that would be bad is kind of a Dank, a um, damp basement. Yeah. Something very, very wet and funky in a way that's not appealing. Like dirt not, and there's, some. There's good funk and there's <laughs> bad funk. Sometimes like dirt and poop in the glass is yeah. good. Like yeah. it's yummy, right? It's like yummy barnyardy. But when it smells like your basement <laughs> flooded. Leslie, Leslie, <laughs> I love you and I trust you, but <laughs> can I just make a blanket statement for everyone watching? Um, I don't want a wine tasting like barnyards. <laughs> I just, I mean, I think, but I get what you mean. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you just smell it, and literally that's the only thing that you're looking for. You would not pick this up and smell it. No. Right? So you're looking to see if the wine is leaked all the way to the surface, which could mean that it was improperly handled. And then the second thing is just smell for that sort of wet cardboard damp smell. This was, and I shared this all with you when I got back a couple years ago. I did, you know, I travel with my group of friends, and we go to a different American city every <laughs> July, yeah. and we went to wine country, and I said that one of the things I learned that kind of I was like, oh, this is a cool learning moment was our our wine mistress told us she goes really when you're tasting wine you're not really she's the server isn't giving it to you really to taste it's That's just right. it's bottom line to make sure the wine is okay That's if, right. it, if it smells bad because wine does go bad it does. and it's not the fault of the vintner it's just. Sometimes it's not corked right. Am I right on this one? Yeah, yeah. so there's a number that this is a bacteria that you'd actually be looking for inside of the bottle. Yeah. Um, so those are the things that you want to do. But let's be clear, you didn't give me a bacteria latent. Uh, <laughs> this is good, right? Okay. That is yeah. good. So really, all you have to do is put your nose inside the glass. 
And then once you approve, the server should go around and pour for the rest of the table. Now you want to make sure that you always do this, even if you ordered a second bottle of the exact same wine, you want to do this for every single bottle that comes to your table, including yeah. screw cap. And screw cap? Yes, because that same bacteria can get into porous materials like the barrel where the wine was originally stored before it went into a oh, screw cap. Oh, seriously? Bottle. Yes. So All right, let me ask you that question because we got to go, but let me ask you that. People think, just like you know, wine and cans have gotten fancier and better quality, mm -hmm. I think people have a hang up. They think that a screw tap wine isn't good. You say what? I say go for it because there's everybody is using a screw cap now. It's a way to preserve natural resources like cork, and it's also a way to get the wine in the glass that in a really fresh manner. So it tastes the same as it did when it left the winery. So it's, it's there's really, don't be ashamed of nope. getting a screw nope. cork. It's fine. Long gone. It's, long, it's gone. long gone. That's right. Quality is just as good. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Uh, we learned a lot. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Leslie, everybody. <laughs> Leslie Miller. For more information, head to amusewine.com. And don't forget, if you missed any of this, we gave you a lot of information. Uh, we'll post this whole thing on social media, on our Facebook page. And again, if you missed the live show, we have our uh, replay 3 p.m. on Fox 9 Plus.